What's up, gamers? I'm John, and this is my Level Up News, where I bring you news every weekday. It's the top news I gather around the web so you don't have to. Today's Wednesday, May 1st, 2024. Let's get you leveled up with today's news. Dragon's Dogma, the original fantasy RPG, left its fans craving for a sequel. And over a decade later, Capcom delivered Dragon's Dogma 2, improving on its first game's flaws while keeping the original's edge that earned its occult following. Since launch on March 22nd, Dragon's Dogma 2 has not only sold well, but has been a hub for fan discoveries and strange player tales. However, it has also been a subject to debate. Despite being one of the highest rated games of 2024, the game's theme page offers various microtransactions, leading to some controversies. Theme reviews criticize the game's poor optimization despite its high ratings elsewhere. Players have discovered particular in-game mechanics, including Dragon's Plague, an illness affecting NPC companions, leading to some hilarious yet tragic consequences. One exploit in the game allows players to generate free money by abusing the pawn system, flooding the game's economy. Dragon Dogmas 2 first patch introduced new features including the ability to reset the game and address the performance issues. Despite some players feeling neglected by the lack of interactions with their pawns, others find humor in the pranks players pull on each other through the pawn system. Notably, the game has sold 2.5 million copies in its first 10 days, exceeding the original game's lifetime sales and earning Capcom unexpected profits. Gunitsugami Path of the Goddess is a unique strategy game that combines traditional Japanese ceremonial dance known as Kagura with action-packed gameplay. As Zao, the player aids Yoshiro, a maiden in purifying procession to cleanse Mount Kafuka from defilement. During the day, you clear defilement and recruit villagers to help fortify your position and fight against mythological fiends called the Sheaths. At night, you join the front line, directing combat units, bestowing protective buffs on Yoshiro and fighting powerful enemies. The game's visual style is heavily influenced by Japanese woodblock prints and its dynamic day and night cycle keeps players engaged. With captivating gameplay and stunning visuals, Kunitsugami Path of the Goddess promises an immersive experience that draws heavily from Japanese folklore and tradition. Meta has announced the next installment in the Batman Arkham series, titled Batman Arkham Shadow, as an exclusive VR game for the Meta Quest 3. Developed by Camouflage and Oculus Studios, the game is set to release later this year. While Meta hasn't shared many gameplay details, the trailer hints at thrilling traversal sections as Batman glides through the rain slick streets of Gotham. There's speculation about who will voice Batman since Kevin Conroy, known for the role, passed away in 2022. This isn't the series' first VR venture. Batman Arkham VR was released in 2016 to mixed reviews. Batman Arkham Shadow will be showcased at the Summer Games Fest on June 7th. Grey Zone Warfare has entered early access, facing server errors and negative reviews on Steam initially, but it has since stabilized to mixed ratings. How does it compare to Escape from Tarkov, you ask, and will it improve over time? The game offers a larger map than Tarkov, but feels less tightly packed. While Tarkov pushes players into close combat, Grey Zone Warfare allows for a varied gameplay style. Tarkov supports solo play, whereas Grey Zone Warfare is strictly squad-based, demanding players to stick to their roles. Both games require players to maintain their health, but Grey Zone Warfare is more unforgiving, with players facing death if they neglect nutrition, especially when injured. Combat in both games is challenging, with Grey Zone Warfare featuring accurate AI bots making its survival difficulty. Despite initial issues, Grey Zone Warfare shows potential, but its success depends on addressing early problems and maintaining player interest. As Apex Season 20 Breakout nears its end, Respawn Entertainment teases Season 21 with a new episode of Stories from the Outlands, titled Based on a True Story. The episode introduces Alter, the upcoming legend for Season 21, as a portal hopping anomaly. Alter's origins remain mysterious and she reveals hints about her past, including her training as an assassin and her connection to Horizon and possibly other legends. Physically, Alta resembles a cyberpunk thiefling with a horn-like antenna and a mechanical arm. The episode suggests that Alter might be an augmentation of existing legends and hints at her connection to Wrath and Horizon. However, her true identity remains dynamic, leaving players eager for Season 21 upheaval for more revelations about her background. Madfinger Games, the developer of Grey Zone Warfare, has released the game's first early access hotfix to address performance issues and bugs. Despite initial negative reviews, with nearly 70,000 players in-game at the moment of the update, 
the game has shown significant potential. The hotfix aims to resolve issues like server crashes, anti-cheat problems preventing gameplay, and instances where players spawn without initial items. Additionally, a public test branch will be introduced to allow players to test fixes before they are implemented on live servers. Changes in the vault menu option such as switching anti-aliasing settings from DLSSR to FSR are expected to enhance graphical performance and overall gameplay experiences. Star Wars Hunters, a free-to-play team-based battle arena shooter developed by Zynga and Lucasfilm Games is set to release on June 4, 2024 for the Nintendo Switch, iOS, and Android. The game features 13 unique characters including you and I, a duel of Jawas disguised in a trench coat, and a J3DI, a droid who believes it's a Jedi. The characters are part of a fight entertainment competition inspired by pro wrestling set in the Star Wars universe. Each character has a distinct persona, complete with personalized music themes and entrance presentations. The game originally announced in 2020 aims to offer players a new way to experience the Star Wars universe combining thrilling combat with larger than life personalities. And finally, Stellar Blade has become the highest user rated PS5 game on Metacritic with a score of 9.2 out of 10, surpassing Cyberpunk 2077's Ultimate Edition and Resident Evil 4's Separate Ways expansion. Despite its strong user rating, some feel the game's cultural significance has influenced these scores, especially considering its lead character's unbashedly sexy portrayal. Many users seem to be awarding the game's high scores as a reaction against perceived woke culture in gaming. While Stellar Blade is undoubtedly a great game, its high score users may also reflect a backlash against critics and the industry's perceived political correctness. The game's user score success has sparked discussion about the influence of culture wars on game ratings. And with that bundle of gaming news, I hope you got enough experience points to level up your gaming knowledge today. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and don't forget to hit that little bell notification so you don't miss any new videos coming out.